sacrifice is holy, acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable service. Now here's the kicker in verse 2. He says, listen, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So he told you what to do and gave you how to do it. It starts up here. It starts here. Listen, our ultimate goal is spiritual transformation. However, the transformation of our souls cannot take place without failures. You have to fail. You got to fail. We look down on failure as if, 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 if like it's the worst thing in the world. But how are you going to learn if you don't fail? Amen. How are you going to learn if you don't fail? You cannot be afraid to fail. Listen, the dude who, um, uh, Colonel Sanders, I forgot, man. I think that dude came out with his recipe, making the chicken for people. I was trying to get it marketed and things like that. He heard maybe like 199 no's. And now it's a KFC on every corner. Amen. He failed tremendously. Dr. Martin Luther King failed tremendously. I got one more for you. The Lord Jesus Christ failed tremendously. I know it now. Everybody start like, well. Oh. However long that transformation takes is entirely up to us. We have an entire lifetime. Though that's not an excuse for slothfulness. You got lazy. The Lord has already given us His Spirit. But the ultimate goal is the transformation of your soul, of your mind, of your everything that you are. We sit in a church and be in the same. Lord, come on now, come on. Living after, chasing after things, man, that's fading away. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't have a desire for a mansion. I don't have a desire for a car. I don't for, for, for these, I don't have a desire for those things. I don't desire to be extra and super rich. I don't desire those things. The one thing that I do desire is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We, the Apostle Paul even said, like, listen, set your affections on things that are above. So how come we spend so much time bickering and fussing with each other over nothing? Over nothing, absolutely nothing. We fuss and we bick and we go through and we say, this person said this and I don't like this and this person said and I don't like that and it's all for nothing. You allow the enemy to advance on your territory. See, listen, like I told, I told our leaders in the back, this is something you got to understand. The devil is not God's enemy. God has no opposers. Every knee has to bow. Every tongue has to confess. God has no enemies. The devil is your enemy. He's your adversary. He comes to trip you up. He can't trip God up. And why does God allow the adversary to do those things to us? Because it's for the advancement of your spiritual life. See, we look at the, we look at the, we look at the adversary with this, oh, the devil trying to stop me from this. No, the devil is trying to get you to go somewhere. Fleshly jump. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's his purpose. He was perfectly made by the Lord. That's his purpose to get you to stumble over. As a matter of fact, his real purpose is to get you again to advance spiritually. And he's never off of his job. It's just you that keep failing. Keep failing. Keep looking at the devil like, oh, you know, he's doing exactly what he was made to do. To get you to mature. To get you to grow. Strengthen our, strengthening your spirit can be like weaning a baby off of the bosom of the mother or the bottom. For a year, year and a half, the baby is used to suckling from his mom or used to that bottle, but the minute you take that bottle away or you remove it from your bosom, you got a fight on your hands. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. You got a fight on your hands. Now you, 
I want this, and the, the, the child is, is pressing with all he can to give you, give him what he wants. But does it benefit you to give him the bottle if you're trying to wean him from the bottle?